Okay, so I'm really tired today. I've been working on the roof and that wore me out. Plus I got some blisters on my thumb. Anything I touch just stings like crazy. So I thought I'd fool around in here today. Um, I got some brass. Brass pieces, our faucet went up, so I took it out and uh, put a new one in. I put one of the higher ones in. My wife wanted a higher one, so I never throw anything away. I saw all this good brass, and I thought, well, I can make bearings out of that and stuff. Odd stuff, uh, brass and copper, brass plate, more brass plate. Uh, brass rod that I use for banging on stuff. It's a bronze pushing. There's uh, something I made for a job years ago. Piece of brass just cut off of a roll. There you can see the bronze. The way it's black and, and bronze color. Uh, and I think there's some copper. A piece of copper in there. Anyway, what I thought I would do today was just I thought I would today just put up a put this up one of these up in the lathe. As a matter of fact, I've got one mounted over there already. It's got a hex like a nut, a big nut on there. That would actually make a kind of a nice ring, but being brass it'd probably turn my finger green. It looks like just the right size. Make a ring out of it, I don't know. I don't know yet. Depends on what comes up. So anyway, let me uh take in take you over Put the camera over top of the lathe now and I'll show you how to pick up a thread on something like this with the lathe. I know there's a lot of videos out there already about picking up threads, but one more ain't going to hurt. Get my opinion on the matter. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and remount the camera and we'll get started on that endeavor. Okay, so I'm going to try to pick this thread up now. Now this piece of scrap, so I don't really care what happens to it. So first thing I'm going to do is bring it in by hand lock it in on number one if I can got to turn it real slow I'm gonna be forever actually let's just turn it on so one has come around and I'm locked in on one so I'm gonna hand bring it in Okay, so where are we locked in at? Okay, so I brought this tool in. I brought this tool in intentionally direct, right directly over that thread with it on with it locked in on the number one on the dial okay so let me go back and Okay, so now I'm, I'll take a picture and show you because I don't I don't want to move the camera. Right now I'm locked in halfway between the number one on the dial and the first half half slash. And I'm going to show you where the tool is running now. Remember, I was just on the high point of the thread. Okay, now, see where I'm at now? I'm directly over the center. Let me take it in. I'm directly over the center of the thread. So I took it in till it touched on the bottom. Now the number on my dial is uh, 73. 
73 so all I got to do now is to start cutting some threads and I'll go ahead and do this um, is back it off come back in to 70 73 let's back it off unlock the carriage go back come into 73 And then bring it when it comes around. I'm going to bring it around now to the, where I was. Okay, so I've brought it around to where it's roughly where I want it. Now I need a little more. Okay, I'm in right in between one and the one and one half, or the the small slash after the one. I'll, I'll show a picture. Um, I guess I'll designate that as A. I'm at position A. Alright, let's let that run. See what happens. Okay. We were just barely scraping. We've got it pretty good. Now, if I want to go in on the compound, I won't do anything right now. Okay, so you can pretty much see that that has picked that up perfectly. Okay. So we'll go back in. Alright. Now that that time I did it by using I'll go over it I'll go over it one more time. I brought the I I brought the tool in on one on the dial. Okay. And it was directly so let me go into 73. It's directly over the top of the thread. It's directly over the top of that thread. Okay. Then what I did, I unlocked the carriage and I moved it to right in between. I'm going to call it position A. I moved it to position A. And I restarted the leg. And I went in until the thread tool bottomed out on the thread. And that number is... Uh, it's because of the run out. Right now, it's at 70, 76 right now, but it was just 73. It's got a little run out on it. Okay, but I don't usually, that's, we'll call that method, this method one. I don't use this method. For one thing, you don't always have a peak. You know, you might break your tool, you've only made one small pass, and you don't have a peak to go on up here. What I, this is, now, the way I'm going to show you now is the way I almost always do threads. I simply go back to beginning, set it up at the beginning, bring around, bring around my number one. I need to, I need to let it come around, uh, slowly because I'm cramped for space here. Okay, so it's coming around now to the number one. I'm on, I'm, my carriage is locked in on number one on the dial. I always use number one and I just wait for it to come around no matter what. Then I bring the part in over top of the work. Like to get the slack out of the gears. And then I simply get this tool. Now it's going to be your left, but I find the right face of any thread, whatever it's closest to, and touch anywhere on that face. Get the brass off of there okay so I'm a little I'm a little off there so I need to come in so I say that much I got a little brush here let me clean that up a little okay so anywhere on that right face once you're over top of it with your compound dial or your 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 30 degree angle dial then just go in until it touches and you might need a magnifier if you're an old guy like me 
If you're an old guy like me, you need a magnifier. Okay. Well, that tool sure is funky looking. Okay. Alright, right there is touching. I'm at 20 on the dial now. Okay. I gotta remember I'm still on one. I haven't I'm not gonna use that other method where I went in between the numbers. Okay, I'm right on it, and the number on my dial is 20. Back it off. Now you could keep on going and get your tool centered in the bottom of there, but you really don't have to. Now, as it was hitting at 20, I want to go to where it's not quite hitting. It's hard to see. i got a camera in my way, like I say. That's not going to touch there. Oh, well, that's perfect. I'm at zero. I'm going to set it at zero. Now, this way, this method, I like it better. I'm always using the same number, and I think you get a little more accuracy. So, what I'm going to do is paint some blue on the threads, and then I'm going to cut. And the way I've got it set now, the, the blue should not be, well, the chips will probably remove it. But the, the tool should not cut on the right bank, only on the left bank. Now I got the slack out of the gears. And I've got it back into zero. I should go in and my tool should be close to the right face but not touching. So at that point I can continue to take my compound slide down and let the 30 degree angles go right down at 30 degree angle until I touch the left face. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm locked in so it's going to start moving immediately. Now I'll go in with the compound start cutting on the right face. I'm oh, sorry, I'll start cutting on the left face. I got a lot of run out. Okay. So now, because I didn't because I didn't cut the first portion to the thread, I'll just go back to zero. And I'll cut that out too. Once the number comes around. Okay, I'm going to lock it in on number one. So now I've cleaned it up all the way. So now I've got my thread picked up. If there was any imperfections, I did lose some thread. And, uh, I think you can see that pretty much the blue is still on the right hand side, my right hand side. But yet the... Okay, I can... Okay. I'll take the camera down and I'll show you. I'll show you. The, the blue is on the right hand side, but it's gone from the left hand side. So if there were any dings on those threads, they would be cleaned up now. And I don't think very much was lost, so they would still work. But that's how you go about picking up a thread. So let me, uh, let me bring that camera down and take some more pictures. And I'll show you exactly what I was doing with the dial here. Okay, so if you look at the uh, part from this side, you see the blue on the threads. And as we move around, I might have to refocus. You can't see, all you see is the brass. So, so basically all I did was trim down the left hand side of those threads a little bit. Hope you can see that dial. This is the one here. Then there's a half slash. Then a two, another half slash. But there's 16 teeth on that gear. So, there's more engagement positions than you use with just these lines. Now, this is all in the Atlas book. Uh, a line, 
you have to draw your own lines in on it. So right here, right smack in between the two, the, the one, actually applies to all of them, in between the two marks is 180 degrees out. So when I took the tool in first and I was at the peak of the thread, and then I didn't do anything else, I just I just went over to this point, which I think I called A or something. Um, that moved the tool 180 degrees out, which put it in between at the at the valley. Which all you have to do then is crank it in till it touches, and that's your number that you need on your X. But like I say, I don't like that because then you have to stop at that mark every time. I like always stopping at the one. If I forget for a minute, then I mess up. So. That's why I never use that method, but I thought I'd just bring that up. That this dial, it also has a mark, a point, an engagement point in between, halfway in between those points, which is uh, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So you can cut a quadruple thread with this group, with any one of these groups. Uh, it, you can look that up in a book or look that up on the internet, or you can play around with it yourself, take some scratch passes. And uh, and see, but uh, I never use that. I don't like having to use different numbers each time. Anyway, I hope this all was helpful. Um, all right, so to draw, to draw that out on a piece of paper here. As long as you're how that look? piece of artwork as long as the tool is anywhere the tip is anywhere inside of there and you take it down and touch that point you can set your X on your machine it, it, it might be better to take it to the center if you don't feel comfortable. Take it to the center and make that. But if you try it a couple of times, experiment with it, you're going to find out that it's the same number. Because once you hit here, this thing is traveling. I'm going to make a dotted line. This thing, this thing is traveling on a line here. So as long as your X comes into that at any point, at any point on there, you're good. So you bring it in to there, set it for X. Then what I do is I start cutting without taking the cross slide in any. And it'll it'll scratch a little bit off of here and as you go down until you hit the bottom and then it'll just and then it'll start cutting normally. That's the way I like to do it. There's everybody's got a different way. I have my way and everybody else has their way. My way's kind of crazy sometimes. But I get it picked up, and I get it, I've picked up hundreds and hundreds of times. But more than likely these threads, I'm just going to cut these off. Like I say, I might make a ring or something out of that. This will be brass for, I'm thinking, no, I think it's too small. This is the part I'm going to put in the drill press. Well, not this part. This part's going in the drill press. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is make a spud out of brass. Rather than trying to, that's perfect. To lock in that small end mill in, probably either one eighth, one quarter max, three sixteenths probably be a good size. Just for uh, trimming edges and stuff, I don't know, maybe cutting small grooves. And uh, then I'll put that bushing in there, a little brass bushing. I'll make, it, make the thing out of solid brass and give it a try. What can it hurt? If, you know, if it rings off, it rings off. Drop that in there and then put this up on the drill press. Don't need that. Put that up on the drill press and then this will give some more support to that end mill. Plus the drill chuck can't fall out. So I'm going to give it a try. Not today. My back's too sore. My hands are too sore. Like I say, I got blisters all over. Um, but I'm going to give that a shot here in the near future. Anyway, that's about all I can do for a day. My back tell me it was doing roofing. And had to climb around doing plumbing, and I'm about wore out. No time for tinkering this week. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.